How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Caswell Customs. Vinny here. So today we're going to be diving back into some snowmobile stuff. So I have to do an oil change on my sled. I got to do an oil change on my brother's sled. This is Tim's new sled. Oh yeah. Um, I'm also going to be changing out this windshield and then my starter hasn't been working and it's not the starter that's shot it's actually the starter relay so i need to get that changed out so we're gonna be doing some work uh luckily our next door neighbor they got a garage with a wood burner in there so it'll be nice and warm so check it out <laughs> did is I pulled the front nose cone off we're gonna pull off this windshield right now and so this is actually a front windshield for a Kawasaki Ninja um, I couldn't find well I they're, they're really hard to find the minimal uh, style windshield for this machine and all of them are super expensive this was 20 bucks off Amazon so it's about the same kind of shape so we're gonna see if we can get it to fit. So I'll get some grommets to fill those holes and then we'll drill new ones, put it on. So like I said, this is not meant for this sled. So this is just like a rough mock-up. We have to drill new holes and everything, but I mean, if you ask me, I think that looks pretty sweet. But yeah, so it's not even gonna connect here and it probably needs to shift back a little bit farther new holes, but all in all not bad first things first we gotta take off all of our plastic so here and here and we're gonna lift it up so we can get the underneath plastics so all there are these little screw tabs just like when you're checking anything else little bush latte Buddy. There we go. I'm going to pull that off. And same thing with your side plastic. Just undo all your screws. And after you get all these off, in order to get the other plastics off, we are going to lift it up to get it everything a lot easier. So we've been having a starting issue. So what's been going on is this relay is busted so i got the new part i'm gonna pull this out it's pretty simple just a couple unplugged wires pop the new one in we'll be good to go so if you're interested in the part number it is yamaha 3el 8194002 um, a lot of the reviews i've read is buy the actual yamaha part because the cheap ebay ones are they fail really quickly so it's gonna slide right off the side there, and then it's just a, do you know what size that was? Uh, eight, mil eight millimeter. To undo those two nuts. And then you'll unplug that top one, and then you'll be able to re-bolt everything back in. Real quick, easy fix. But undo your battery first. Yeah, that's probably a good point to make out. Yeah, always undo your battery first before you start messing with electrical. So we're putting the new part on. We're gonna put some anti-corrosion on there. Uh, that way we don't have the problem we had with the other one. Uh, the other one's kind of gunked up. And so we're gonna throw this back in now. All right, so if you hook it back up, put your battery back on, and then uh, we'll give her a test. All right, so let's go ahead and see if it'll turn over. That's our problem, so we're good. Tim, go ahead and start lifting. So you have a bunch of these little plastic clips that you're just going to take a flathead 
and pry those away. And that just can bust it off. Don't worry about it. So you're gonna have one back there, one up here. I'm supposed to have one up there, but obviously doesn't wasn't originally on there. And then there's gonna be a I believe 10 millimeter bolt there and there. And then you can get the sides off. And then you're gonna have more of those plastic tabs. And I actually have a skid plate that's actually screwed in that I gotta take off. Like I said, two 10 millimeters on the bottom. Goes off. And then we can get this plastic piece off, and then we'll get the skid plate off. Let's take a Phillips screwdriver and go ahead and get these out. And then this should be the last thing holding. Actually, sure, no, I got one more plastic clip up here, and then we can get these pieces off. Alright, so once you have your under skid plate off, which mine had a thicker one that we didn't have on my brother's, so there's actually two skid plates. Um, once you get that off, then you can start draining your oil. So there's going to be your drain plug right there. You're going to undo that and then just open up the fill so it can breathe while you're emptying it. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Well, I don't know. Just did this 20 minutes ago. Just take the tray over. That's what I do. I I bring the tray around with me. so it's out of the way. Where's that rag at? Just leave it in there for now. You can pull it out after. Uh, I just left it there until I started changing the uh, actual oil. Now we definitely need the rag. It's way over there. Not as close as you thought. Just barely got on my fingertip, so yeah. I'll take the win. It's part of the process. Alright, so then you're gonna let your oil drain out. Um, once this is completely empty. You can tap it and then you're going to move underneath using the an Allen bolt, which I'll show you in a second. They loosen up to let the lower oil pan oil out, and then your oil filter's done. Alright, so once you've drained your oil, go ahead and put your uh, nut back on your plug, and you're going to come up underneath here. And so you got your oil filter right there and then this outside nut the one with the washer on it is the one that you got to undo that's going to let all the oil out from the oil pan from the bottom of the engine and then you're going to take that off and then you'll replace the filter so yeah, take that out because you're gonna have a steady flow of oil coming out of there that's all the oil it's in the engine pan or the oil pan and then we're gonna get the filter out and you can get a bunch of oil from there too. Okay, so that's where the oil filter is. Went and took it off, drained the oil out. I actually actually dropped it in there. Don't do that. But now uh, we're gonna get the new oil filter and throw it on. So 
Go ahead and get your oil filter on there. Um, take a little bit of oil and put it in there and lubricate the ring on top and get it on there hand tight. You can use an oil filter tightener, but it's not necessary. Just get it hand tight and you'll be good. Make sure your plug's tightened. Make sure that's tightened. And then we can go ahead and throw oil in her. You're gonna put 3.38 quarts into this. I only put in three. I'm gonna take it outside, run it. And then we're gonna put the last 0.38. Uh, make sure you dispose of your oil appropriately. So put it in another container. And then any like auto, auto parts store or anything like that will let you turn in recycled oil. Now we're gonna change out the chain case oil. So you're gonna go ahead and undo your dipstick. Let it breeze. And you take a 12 millimeter socket, loosen that up. takes 250 milliliters. I got about 200 in this one, so I'm gonna have to take a little bit from another one. So, done. We pull that whole unit out and just take your dipstick. Good. But on some of the places where they had just the metal, like back up. Mike and Bill, but you know, we got the metal kind of rings. So. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as oil change and chain case change. Uh, now we should throw all the plastics back on and we'll be ready to go. Thanks for watching another episode of Caswell Custom. As always, go ahead and drop a like on the video. Go ahead and subscribe. Also share this video. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions about the install of the new windshield, any of the oil change. Uh, if you're curious about any of the products that we used, I'll go ahead and leave links in the description for the new windshield, the oil change kit, um, we just bought the chain case oil from a local dealer um, that we have up in Gaylord. Uh, go ahead and follow us on Instagram, at Caswell Customs. Also check us out on Facebook. We post video or videos and pictures daily on there. Um, pretty soon we're going to be getting into the snowmobiling season. Uh, we got about three weeks until the trails actually open up. So we'll be coming out with more content of us actually out on the trails and having some fun doing some more vlog style videos. So go ahead and uh, subscribe so you can check that out. As always, I'll see you in the next one.